Welcome from Heathcote Electronics. This video is about how to use our control boards to operate micro linear servos. As you can see alongside the 5P coin they are really small. This lever moves backwards and forwards instead of being rotary as on the normal servo motors. There's a screw thread that moves it. Here's the electric motor. It's really tiny. There's a couple of gear wheels to the screw thread. Under the screw thread is a potentiometer as we explained in the previous videos about servo motors. On the underside are the electronics. Obviously being so small makes it very useful to hide in a way. And if you get a signal it would be easy to fit it with a bracket underneath the signal so it's all one unit that you can lift out the baseboard with a wire attaching from this lever up, into, up, into, up onto the balance weight on the signal. There are two problems to be overcome. The first is the connector is absolutely tiny so it won't fit on the connectors on our dual and single servo controllers. The second problem is because the motor is so tiny it requires 3 volts rather than 5 volts to power it. Our servo controller boards give out 5 volts. There's a simple way to overcome both these problems. What I'm going to do is use a servo motor extension lead, cut that in half, cut the connector off here and join the two together and that will take care of the connectors. Now for the other thing that needs to be done is to reduce the voltage from 5 volts to 3 volts because with such a tiny motor the 5 volts is going to do it a lot of damage. I'm going to do that by using diodes. I'll explain that now. Here's the servo motor controller. Here's the connector. The middle connector is the one that gives out 5 volts. If you imagine the wire connected to this and then you imagine that you solder on two diodes. These then go to power the servo motor. And this will go back to one of these connectors which is zero volts. As you may know diodes are a one way volt for electricity. If you have a diode this way around and suppose you've got a, a battery here and you've got a light bulb there then if that's the positive end of the battery then the current can flow that way around and the light bulb will light up but if you had it the other way around that's the in other words you turn the battery around and that's a positive end that's the negative end you've got the diode there and the light bulb then the light bulb wouldn't work because the current flows from positive to negative this it can't flow from negative to positive I should mention that this end there's a bar a silver a silver line and that's always used to mark which orientation the diode's got. As the current flows through the diode it loses a little amount of voltage and for a silicon diode which nearly all diodes are this will be pretty close to 0.8 volts. The property of this which makes it so useful to use the diodes is that even if you were to double the current this would be still very close to 0.8 volts. If you instead you try to use a resistor and you double the current you would double the voltage. If we look at this diagram we've got 5 volts there this flows through the first diode we lose 0.8 volts so if we measure here we would have 4.2 volts flows through the next diode we lose another 0.8 volts so if we measure again we'll have 3.4 volts 
at this point here. So this end is 0 volts, this end is 3.4 volts, so hopefully the electric motor will be suited to that. Now to try this in practice. This would have been a lot easier to do if there wasn't a camera filming me. But anyway, it's very simple. White wire to white wire. Black wire to black wire. There's the diodes under the heat shrink. We have made a video that gives a background to our servo motor controllers. We're going to put a link to this in the comments section. But anyway, now to connect it all up. We need a 12 volts power supply. The positive, which is the one with the white wire strand, goes in the plus. Here it is. The note is going to share the power supply with an on off switch. And the other wire from the on-off switch goes to the S, S for start. This is the dual servo controller. So, as well as the servo that plugs in here, you can have a second servo. They're completely independent of each other. This also has an S for start and a, the F's are F for finish. The F for finish can be used in several ways. One way, instead of using a switch you can link the F and S together and then the servo motor oscillates backwards and forwards or you can link the F of one servo control to the S of the other. And then what happens is after the first ones, after you've thrown the switch, made the first one move, then it activates the F and then the second servo will move. Just plug in the servo motor Oh, and remember, it's the little open window that goes towards the back. Now, plug in the power. I'll just tear the servo motor so you can see it. Now, if I press the speed button, hold it down for five seconds, it will centre the arm. There we are. Now we'll make an adjustment. 
that's just the gear wheel catching on the surface throw the switch it's back to the center adjust it the other way now when I throw the switch it will move between those two positions try a different speed that's back to the slowest speed so in some circumstances where you need to hide a tiny servo motor away this could be quite useful the only disadvantage compared to the standard servo motor is that there's a it's a lot more fragile and there's a lot less torque so I'm not sure if it would have enough power to, to switch a point for example um, the reason that it's so fragile is it is actually intended for indoor model aeroplanes so they've made it as light as they possibly can if you want to get some more background information about servo motors and how to use them with our controllers uh, if you have a look on our youtube channel then you'll find several videos and we also plan to make some more in the future i hope you found this useful and informative this had us puzzled we couldn't see what we'd done wrong because the arm keeps moving <laughs> then after wondering what on earth was happening i realized it was just where our fingers were holding the servo motor it's perfectly still if you're not touching the servo motor <laughs>